All right, this is gonna be pretty hard. I'm usually lucky if I make this first try when I don't have a camera hanging off my head. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jeff Lanoski. I've been having some fun the past few weeks making these videos, trying to help you get better while staying at home or close to home since most of the trails are probably shut down that you'd like to ride right now. So today I decided to grab my backpack and hop on my Reeb Ridiculous and head into town and show you some more stuff that you can work on. The terrain might be different, but the skills are the same. So let's go take a look and see what we can find. All right, now, first things first, if your town or city is on a lockdown, don't do this stuff. We don't need anybody getting arrested. Second thing, make sure you stay safe and keep it within your comfort zone. When you're technical riding, you can basically boil it down into three main areas. Riding on stuff, riding onto stuff, and riding off of stuff. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is riding on stuff because that's probably the easiest thing that you could practice and probably the easiest thing for you to find. I'm gonna hop up on this curb and give it a shot. We'll see if we can get it first try. Oh, all the tricky part too. So the number one thing that you can do to improve your balance when you're riding skinnies is get your center of gravity a little bit lower. I like to do that by lowering my hips. Dropping them an inch will improve your balance dramatically. All right, the second thing that you can do to increase your balance is don't look directly down at your front tire. Now, I know it's super tempting when you're riding something skinny, but if you could look a little bit in front of you, it's gonna also increase your balance. Last but not least, don't be afraid to use your brakes when you're riding a skinny. If you start to fall off to one side, you can feather your brakes and it'll slow your bicycle down, and then you could use that change of momentum of your bicycle to shift your body weight back where it needs to be. All right, this right here is gonna be the ultimate balance training tool right here. So this thing is really long. It's not super high, so it's fairly safe. Just high enough to really make you win that mental battle a little bit. But it's long, it's curvy, gets a little bit higher, gets a little bit lower. I'm gonna try to see if I can ride this whole thing from the start to the finish, going back over those techniques that I gave you before. And I'm gonna do it with a pretty cool camera angle too. See if we can get this done. You ready for this? Rich Drew? I don't know who's use a GoPro mount on the top of my helmet, but when I do, it's for stuff like this. All right, this is kind of weird. I'm gonna take a picture to show you what this thing looks like. Hey! All right, this is gonna be pretty hard. I'm usually lucky if I make this first try when I don't have a camera hanging off my head, and now I do. So let's give this a shot and try to go over some of those tips again. All right, so not looking down at my straight, straight at my wheel, but this camera's kind of in my way. I'm trying to bend my knees a little bit, dip my hips. When you get some speed going, or if you have a down pitch, you could actually drop your front foot and that'll even give you a little bit better balance because then your weight is below the bottom bracket so it helps you even more and then a couple of things that make this balance line so challenging is it's long so it's hard to not lose focus and then i know this sounds stupid but you're riding so long with your knees slightly bent that you get the burning in your legs. Oh my God, I made it. Your legs are like on fire trying to do that thing. Cause it's just like, I don't know, 45 minute squat, but made it and that was pretty sweet. So just to recap one more time, don't look straight down at your tire, bend your knees, get your hips down a little bit. Don't be afraid to feather your brakes or readjust yourself. All right, hopefully those skinny riding tips come in useful. Now we're gonna try to find a place to show you how to get onto stuff. And I like to practice doing that with a punch. We found the elusive three-tiered step up in the wild. This is gonna give us the perfect opportunity to work on a move, 
That's the second most popular video on my YouTube channel called the punch. Now you do a punch instead of a bunny hop and it's basically when you touch your front tire to an obstacle and you go up or over it. These are perfect to practice on curbs or anything higher and the three tips that I like to give people on that is the number one, try to practice not putting your front tire directly on top of the obstacle. There's no need to make the move any harder than it is and when you're out on the trail, you don't get bonus points for making a section harder, you get bonus points for cleaning a section. So by putting your front tire onto the edge or the face of the obstacle, it basically makes it smaller and makes it easier to get onto. Now if you're doing a curb, it's kind of hard to not put your tire on top, but as you get about a foot or 18 inches tall, putting your front tire into the edge will make all those moves easier. The second thing that I like to do is to pedal into this move. When you coast into it, you start out fast and you slow down. When you pedal into it, you can start slow and ramp up the speed. Ramping up your speed is what's gonna help you get onto the obstacle. So I like to pedal into this move. This is gonna be a tough one. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six steps high. I'm gonna try to go straight up this wall. As you can see, when I approach the obstacle, I take a pedal stroke, I spring off my feet, and then I spot my front tire into the face of it. As my bike contacts the obstacle, it unweights the bike, and I put my bike up on the obstacle. Practicing this move on steps, ledges, it's the exact same move that I used to get over logs or up ledges out on the trail. So it's a perfect opportunity to dial in this skill now while the trails are closed so that you're dialed when we get back on them. I'm digging this camera angle. I might force you to watch this angle all the time, although my subscriptions will probably completely fall off. So now it's time to find some stairs so we can give you some tips on how to go down stuff. Now, why do you want to ride down stairs? Stairs are an awesome way to work on your roll down skills because they're scalable. If you're just getting started, two or three stairs might be a challenge for you. And if you're experienced, you might want to ride down 10, 15 stairs. A set of stairs is a perfect way to mimic a fairly steep roll down on your mountain bike. Here's a couple tips that you're gonna to use to refine your technique so that you're dialed when you hit the trail. You wanna to try to stay centered on your bike. We've all seen images of people with their butts way back behind the seats. And with modern day geometry bikes, you need to ride them a little bit different than you would have ridden a bike five or 10 years ago. So if your bike is three to five years old, chances are it has a slacker head tube than ever, it has a steeper seat tube than ever, and it has a longer reach than ever. But you wanna make sure that you're riding a lot more centered on the bike with more weight through your feet and you wanna have your elbows bent. A lot of coaches teach light hands, heavy feet. And what that means is you wanna keep your body weight through the pedals and then you wanna have light hands. So you never wanna to feel too much pressure on the backs of your fingers or on the palms of your hands. Your bike is gonna rotate downwards as you roll down something steep, but your weight is still gonna be through the pedals. As you're getting to the bottom of a steep roll down, you could extend them a little bit and accelerate your bike so that it doesn't just drive directly into the ground. You could smooth out the transition and make that roll down feel even a little nicer. So let's do a couple reps on these steps and focus on our body position. As I roll in, I'm looking ahead, I'm using my brakes to control my speed, I'm feathering them, and I'm keeping my body weight centered with my elbows bent. When I get to the bottom, I accelerate my bike a little bit and it helps smooth out the transition. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully those skills and drills will help you improve so that you can get better for when we're ready to get out on the trail. If you're looking for a more personalized interaction, I just started a brand new Patreon level this week. It's called the Trail Boss Collaborative. I'll put a link to it in the description below, but it'll give you access to a private Facebook group where you can post videos, photos, and questions, and you can learn from me and other members of the group. If there's a move or a technique that you're having trouble with, post up a video. I'll give you some skills and drills to help you improve.
if there's a random bike question about how I set up my suspension, tire pressure, component choices, it'll be your opportunity for a one-on-one -on -one interaction to give you all the tools necessary so that you can get out on the trails and be a boss. I'm super excited to interact with some of you and take your riding to the next level. So make sure you check it out. And until next time, get out there and be a boss. Socially distance. Thank <laughs> you.